This week's The Truth About Colonial Linden update is on a near unbelievable figure whom some scrupulous deeds are verified by more accounts than any of our previous highlights. The son of Colonel Cornelius Hatfield, veteran of the French and Indian War and Elizabethtown First Presbyterian Church elder, Captain Cornelius Hatfield II is said to be the most infamous of all of the Elizabethtown loyalists. Hailing from one of, the, of Elizabethtown's oldest families, which became split over the issue of independence, the Hatfield family spread all over Elizabethtown, many family farming plots located in what is now Linden. His family also owned large areas of swamp near Morses Creek in Linden that would become part of the Griselli section, ground zero for the industrialization of Linden in the 20th century. He had spent most of the war on Staten Island serving for the Loyalist militia, the New Jersey Volunteers, engaging with his hometown across the kill in a very real and many times brutal civil war. The Hatfield or Hetfield family certainly played a major role in what would become Linden in later years. The name known by many as the family that owned the wire and cable company just off Stiles Street for decades and the small wood and creek adjoining the site are still today known as Hatfield Woods. The interesting note about this loyalist is that his principal estate at the time of the revolution was actually located in what is now the Bayway section of Linden. It was out of the way of the bustling areas of Elizabethtown on what is now the Linden side of Bayway, also known as the 8th Ward. His large property had two of his three farming lots adjoined, and this was also adjacent to the swamp holdings his family owned south of Halstead's Point. The acreage had Cornelius II's apple orchard and cider mill. This was a substantial amount of land here in Linden. Cornelius himself surely lived there early, but becoming one of the wealthier members of one of the most prosperous colonial families, it is believed that he had built a mansion along the Elizabeth River in Elizabethtown proper. The mansion, though, may have been built and lived in by his father, then inherited, it is not entirely clear. This was located somewhere near Trinitas, the old St. Elizabeth's Hospital, and the main high school. A perfect location with just a short carriage ride or horse ride to his holdings, even a walk would take but a half an hour. His cousin Sarah Hatfield, from our last video, who was married to Abraham Clark, living on their land without her boys or husband for most of the war. The kinship is probably what saved the Clark farm from destruction as Captain Cornelius Hetfield was a high-ranking officer in the Jersey Volunteers, the Crown's Loyalist forces, who were stationed on Staten Island and carried out many of the raids into Linden during the conflict. Sometimes Hatfield, along with his cousin John, would raid with their men or be guides for the British forces. After Washington was able to make Jersey untenable, the British forces left for New York and Captain Hatfield's lands and possessions seized in 1779. After this, his fight was not for King alone, but for his lands. These seizures against the Loyalists surely elevated the ruthlessness of the fighters on Staten Island, then in turn, the Patriots. We found many of his infamous raids documented in accounts from the book New Jersey Volunteers, as well as recorded in battle histories from American and British forces. He was extremely vengeful and notorious, written about for carrying out his Tory views far beyond anything seen by the other New Jersey volunteers. He was even implicated in a cold-blooded murder of a Mr. Ball, causing him to flee to England in the later years of the war. Upon return to New Jersey in some years after the war, he was arrested for the murder, but he escaped prosecution because of the terms of the Treaty of 1783. It takes an awful lot of guts and ire to return to a place in which one fought one's neighbors with the utmost ferocity. I think it's fair to say he was Lyndon's first psychopath. There's quite a bit of information on several of Captain Hatfield's ruthless raids. Some he led, some he guided, but always he endeavored with the most malicious intent and Tory fervor. Capturing direct neighbors, looting for supplies, and burning for the spite, settling scores as he perceived, and no mercy except in the case of his cousin Sarah Clark, who was alone on the Clark plantation. Cornelius Hatfield Jr. was or became an odious man as accounted from both American and British sources. His cruelty and insensitivity combined with his absolute obedience to the crown made him one of the few truly trusted Tory officers. These qualities were valuable to the Redcoats who found themselves in a guerrilla war in which they generally gained the field but at high cost. Captain Hetfield was the equivalent counter-response. 
Despite his age, he became one of the most successful captains of any British unit in the war. Here are some of the descriptions of that hellfire, paraphrased from the work The New Jersey Volunteers, Loyalists in the Revolutionary War by William Stryker in 1887. On the evening of June 12, 1778, in response to the colonial success in the Forge War, Jersey Volunteers Captain Cornelius Hatfield Jr. crossed over the Arthur Kill, plundered the residence of Lieutenant John Haviland of the 1st Regiment, Essex County, New Jersey Militia, and carried him off as a prisoner. On the evening of January 25, 1780, Captain Cornelius Hatfield guided an advance raiding party of New Jersey Volunteers of the 1st and 3rd Battalions in all 132 men under Lieutenant Van Buskirk, with 12 British Dragoons under command of Lieutenant Stewart, into Elizabethtown. They carried off five officers, 47 soldiers. Among the captured Americans was the commanding officer, Amos Morse, who we highlighted in our Morse family video. They also burned the Presbyterian Church, the courthouse, and the schoolhouse, as 6,000 redcoats coming up from the rear of the advanced troops intended to march to Morristown in an attempt to draw Washington's army out to fight. A chronicle diary found from this time describes Hatfield as most horrifyingly malicious. Then, in further discredit, it shares that his father for many years had been an elder in the church in which he had laid waste and totally destroyed, being the first to throw his torch. A few weeks later, on the evening of February 10, 1780, the British and Tory troops on Staten Island made another raid on to Elizabethtown, plundering the residence of many prominent citizens and made active search for Judge Elisha Boindet and the Honorable William Peartree Smith, both noted patriots. To Captain Hatfield's disagreement, his men were unable to locate the prominent citizens. On March 24, 1780, they tried the same experiment. Crossing over the kill in today's Linden, advancing troops up the coastline, this time Hatfield successfully took Major Matthias Halstead, his direct neighbor, as a prisoner. Halstead would find himself imprisoned in Manhattan at the Sugar Hill Mill Prison. Cornelius Jr. would also guide the advanced troops in June of 1780, for an ex expeditionary force into Elizabethtown to reestablish a foothold in the former colony. After the British put up earthen and wood defenses, they marched up Elizabeth Avenue where clashes occurred at the river, then among the debris of the church and courthouse he himself executed the destruction of. With the overwhelming force at his back, the colonial, colonials had no choice but to fall back to Connecticut Farms, now in Union, which would be the third clash, this set of actions setting the stage for a decisive battle at Springfield, where the Continentals forced the withdrawal of the Redcoats all the way to the newly fortified beachhead they quickly built at Elizabeth Point. During the entire retreat, militiamen from all angles were laying down fire from wounded areas and walls. This left the Redcoats, Hessians, and Tory troops utterly demoralized and exhausted. Clinton decided it wasn't worth risking having to repel an attack from the small piece of land protected by the hastily erected defenses at Elizabeth Point. The British withdrew back to New York and would not attempt another invasion of New Jersey. Cornelius Hatfield Jr. leaves New Jersey near the end of the war after Yorktown. He does so to escape prosecution for murder. Using the war as a shield, he kills a civilian, Mr. Ball, in cold blood. With utmost audacity, he returns to New Jersey a few years later and is arrested only to escape prosecution again. This is due to his right as a British soldier during the conflict, as dictated by the Treaty of Ghent. We were unable to verify, but it is likely Captain Hatfield, along with his cousins, were involved with the other prominent captures of statesmen like Isaac Sr. and Isaac Winans Jr., as well as the joint Hessian and Loyalist capture of nearly 100 Patriots, with five being officers at Raleigh Meadows, now Linden, in January of 1778, about a month before Maxwell's victory at Spanktown.